What's up, players? Okay, so um, in the intro little video that I did uh, in the previous module, um, I sort of went over what we're going to be looking at when it comes to uh, the contemporary economic theories of the moderate left and the moderate right. When we talk moderate left, remember, guys, what we're talking about uh, is modern liberalism, right? We're not talking about the far left, okay, communism, uh-uh, right? We're talking about left of center, modern liberalism. And when we talk moderate right, we're not talking fascism, right? We're not talking about the far right. We're talking about neoconservative economic theory. So what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to talk about the goal of each economic system, and then we'll get into a discussion about the boom and bust cycle. And uh, we'll look at a couple of different economic situations in terms of what economies try to do and what they want to ultimately avoid. So this shouldn't take too, too long. So this particular PowerPoint is called Contemporary Economic Theory, the Left and the Right, Social 30, Keynesian versus Neoconservative Economic Policy. And to a lesser extent, one reason why Mitt Romney, this guy right here, lost the 2012 presidential election. Uh, and uh, in the end, guys, I, I want you to realize that it's not all or nothing. It's not one or the other in terms of economic philosophy that I think is optimal to create the best economy where we have a combination of prosperity and also opportunity for everyone. Uh, I think there is a nice happy medium between leftist and rightist economic ideals that can be mixed uh, into a better economy. Okay, let's move forward. So the big question, uh, what does every economic system want to create? Well, it's already here on the slide in the next point for you. It wants to create prosperity. So whether it is modern liberal economics or neoconservative economics, right? The economics of the left or the right, what it wants to do is create a society with prosperity, with wealth, where people are doing well. Why do economic systems want to create prosperity? Well, because poverty, which is the opposite of prosperity, is fertile ground for things like revolution and violence and chaos in society. So both of these economic ideologies, right, the uh, idea of the left and the right, they both want to create prosperity. They just go about it very, very differently. So the next point here says, what is the best way for governments to create prosperity? And I want you to have a understanding, an understanding of what the left says is the means in which we regulate an economy to produce prosperity, which is for the greater good of the people, and how also the right talks about how we produce prosperity for the greater good of the people. And I will tell you right now, leftist economics is definitely more complicated, right? The term Keynesian economics, for those of you in 30-1, uh, for 30-2s, right? This is just kind of a bonus for you, um, the name Keynesian uh, economics. But Nonetheless, you should understand the general economic interventionism that we see on the left, right? So um, it says, is the best way to cross or create prosperity by leaving the country to be, right? Let the economy be and follow the principles of laissez-faire where when we have times of boom and the economy is going well, we do nothing. And then when we eventually see the bust and it starts to go down, we do nothing. Is that the best way to create prosperity? Or is it by government having an active hand in the economy and basically being like a parent who nurtures the economy and continually kind of pushes it in the direction in which it needs to go? I like to think of the idea of leftist economics, Keynesian economics, as like a parent who takes the training wheels off their child's bike for the first time. If you've ever watched a parent take the training wheels off of their child's bike, it is a very nervous time. And a good parent, not all parents, but I think a good parent, 
Um, depending upon if you believe in tough love or not. But I, I mean, I did this when my daughters were learning how to ride without training wheels. What I did is, you know, they, they're on their little pedal bikes. Uh, and, um, once you, uh, kind of get them going, cause that's always the hardest part is getting them going. And once they're sort of balancing a little bit, you're sort of running beside them, making sure they don't crash one way or the other, right? You're sort of like that guiding hand, lifting them back up, making sure they don't smash their poor little faces and wipe out and never want to ride again. So this one here, right? The economics of the right, it's like, you know what? The kid falls down, they got to learn, right? They got to learn how to do it. And if they fall down 25 times after the 26th time, they'll get up and figure it out. Or, right, the economics of the left is, you be those hands, you be those bottom hands, as is very popular for people to say right now. And you make sure that kid doesn't fall. And eventually they put it all together and figure it out. In the end, the goal is the same. You want the kid to ride the bike. The goal is the same for the left and the right in terms of economics. You want prosperity. It's just how we go about it is very, very different. And guys, Evidence supports the idea of laissez-faire being a very valid economic system. And evidence also supports the idea of modern liberal economics, Keynesian economics, being a very viable system as well. And again, me personally, Scott Crosby, uh, I believe that uh, a combination or a mixture of leftist and rightist economic theory is the best, right? We want to have people uh, owning uh, businesses, right? Having private property, right? Owning the means of production. But we also want government to be like that referee who watches the game and steps in when people break the rules um, in order to ensure that the game isn't rigged, right? Okay, let's move forward. Now, uh, modern liberal versus neoconservative economic policy. So it says, recall that modern liberals believe in the role of government or that the role of government when it comes to the economy is very hands-on, right? Modern liberals are quasi-socialists. Socialists have their hands in the economy, right? That's just what they do. Now, alternatively, guys, neoconservatives or modern conservatives, right? But we don't call them modern conservatives. We call them neoconservatives. Neocons today believe in as little government intervention as possible. Now, the big name that you should know when it comes to modern liberal economic philosophy is a man by the name of John Maynard Keynes. So uh, John Maynard Keynes is a British economic uh, or economist, right? And Keynes said whether we're in a period of boom or bust, the job of a government is very, very specific. There's very much a specific role for the government in the regulation of an economy. And in general, guys, Keynes is thought of as what is known as an economic interventionist, right? Economic interventionism means you do something to keep the economy moving forward, right? Now, alternatively, guys, um, there's uh, you know, three names that are pretty important for the economics of the right. Uh, that being, uh, Frederick Hayek, uh, who's from the Austrian School of Economics. Uh, Milton Friedman, who's from the Chicago School of Economics. And also Ludwig von Mises, who's also from the Austrian School of Economics. When we talk about, uh, Reaganomics, uh, and the idea of uh, laissez-faire, privatization, deregulation, all these things we associate with the economic policy of the right. These three individuals, von Mises, Friedman, and Hayek, very much uh, embrace these ideas of basically hands off, let it be, let it go, right? All those things we associate with um, rightist economic policy. And of course, guys, when we talk about... Um, the right. I mean, Adam Smith, he is the guy who is considered to be the father of uh, capitalist e economics, right? So he would very much also, of course, fit into that philosophy or that camp. Now, um, the problem with economies. Look, guys, um, 
I am not an economist, right? I am not. I am but a humble high school social studies teacher, although I do know some stuff, right? Um, but um, all economies go through what we call the boom bust cycle, right? They go through this thing called the boom bust cycle. What I'm going to do is just highlight, guys, this is what a boom looks like right here. So when the economy is going upwards, we call that a boom, right? So there's a boom here. There's a boom here. There's a boom here. And then there's another boom right here. Now, when it goes down, right, we call that a bust, right? That's where it's going down, where it's going down, and where it's going down. Now, you'll sometimes, if you watch any financial shows, you'll hear uh, the terms bull and bear market. So a bull market is where the economy is going up, right? So a bull market is where the economy is going up. And if you actually, if you look up uh, the statue of Wall Street, you'll see that it is a bull, right? And uh, alternatively, guys, when the economy is going down, right, that is what we call a bear market. So just be aware of those terms, bull market, bear market. If you're watching anything in the news right now about the economies, right, they're talking sometimes about the idea of a bull market versus a bear market. Bull markets are good. That's where things are going up and bear markets are bad. That's where things are going down. Okay, so bull is a boom bear is a bust now guys if you look at the boom bust cycle right here i want you to notice oops i want you to notice uh this right here if we took the peak of the boom and the trough of the bust and kind of squeezed it along what would happen is we would eventually flatten out this curve, right? You've probably heard that term lately, flatten the curve. Uh, we would flatten the curve in this case, and we would produce a nice gradual line of growth, right? That's what we're looking for. So the goal of every economy is to have, as it suggests right here, measured, sustained, gradual growth, right? We don't want this line that we have right here this dotted line to be like taking off like a nazi v2 rocket right we don't want it to be flat we don't want it to be negative growth aka a recession or a depression we want a nice gradual line of growth now whether you are a follower of keynesian economics or a follower of the austrian or chicago school of economics you go about achieving this measured, sustained, gradual growth very differently. And we'll look at that coming up. Now, guys, remember, the goal is that nice, sustained growth curve, right? That's what we want. Now, we need to talk about stagnation. So in this, I'm going to use my handy dandy drawing tools inside this program here. All right, prepare to be amazed. So um, let's talk stagnation for a sec. So when something is stagnant, it means it's not changing. So I'm going to draw. Boo, 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 boo. All right, that's a graph. It's pretty terrible, right? And this will be the economy. And this will be time. Okay, the economy over time. So in that last example that we had, right, we had something that looked like this. Right, that nice sort of measured sustained growth. However, right, when we get stagnation, we get something like, again, the economy and time, right? This is what stagnation looks like, and that's supposed to be a flat line, although drawing on my drawing tool is not exactly easy, okay? So imagine this line right here being flat, right? That is a stagnant economy. The economy is not growing. It is not contracting. It is stagnant, right? And, I mean, stagnation compared to economic growth 
um, is not good, okay? Alternatively, I'm just gonna erase this. Let's go to the next, definitely not what we want situation. One sec here, one sec. I'll just go and go back to this. I'm gonna change my tool. Turn that off. Now, the next uh, item, guys, that we need to talk about is the idea of recession or depression, okay? And this is also not good. So I'm gonna open up my drawing tool again, right? Uh, and again, here we go. Here's a vertical axis. Here's our horizontal <laughs> axis. Uh, this is the economy and this is time, right? Um, so what a recession or depression looks like would be something like this, where over time, the economy is actually decreasing, right? And of course, guys, we've looked at already um, re or uh, depression, right? We've looked at the Great Depression for 10 years, roughly from like 1929 to 19. 39, this was the American economy. And when we see depressions or recessions, we see consumer spending slow down. We see um, people starting to lose their jobs. Uh, we see a lack of demand for consumer goods. All of these things are not good. So um, guys, just please understand, we want slow measured growth. Now, just to address uh, one other issue here, I'm just going to erase this and then go back to our slide here. Um, just to address one thing, like, you know, why don't we want Mr. Crosby something like that as far as the economy goes? How come, and just ignore this little end part here, why don't we want it taking off like that? Like why, Mr. Crosby, do we want it to be more sort of like this? Why is this better? Look, again, guys, I'm not an economist uh, and, you know, boy, I do understand that when times are really, really good, right? Like imagine, oops, uh, imagine this being the 1920s, okay, right here, right? The Roaring Twenties. Well, what came after the Roaring Twenties? Well, we had 1929, right? October 1929, uh, the 29th of October, we see the stock market blip and then it began something very ugly like that, right? So when things go up drastically, they have to go down drastically. If they go up more gradually, they also come down in a more gradual manner where the downside is not as ugly. So in general, again, we want that slow measured sustained growth right? That is our goal. And how we go about it is very, very different, okay? Um, so in the next slide, we'll talk about Keynesian economics, um, or in the next set of slides, we'll talk about Keynesian economics, what we do during periods of boom or bust. Then we'll shift to uh, the Austrian and Chicago school. We'll talk about what they believe is the path forward to economic prosperity. And then we'll look at the application of Austrian and Chicago School economics in the 1980s and 1990s with Reaganomics, Thatcher, Klein, Mulroney, uh, and we'll look at the resultant economic contraction that actually happened because of it. Okay, um, that is it for us here, guys. Peace. Love y'all. Um, stay safe. Bye.